Hello guys, happy Monday. So, I realized that I'm not as dressed up as I was yesterday when I did the video, but apparently there was no sound yesterday when I did the video, so I hope there's sound today and I'm redoing it for you. Sorry about that. But I'm also doing it in the middle of my room, which if I move too much you're going to see it's really messy, so don't judge me. Um, and I have my coffee here. It's like coffee time with Kylie this morning. <laughs> so, um, all right. So what I was talking about, I had someone message me. I was, uh, I had that post. I don't know how many of you guys are on Facebook, like other than this group, like, um, you know, how often you see me post or whatever, but I was posting that I was having some company over to my house. So, uh, someone from this group had messaged me and was like, Hey, when you have company over, do you still eat the way you normally eat or do you, you know, change it? Um, basically, are you, are you always, do you always choose to be healthy regardless of the situation? Um, so I replied and I was like, actually, this is a great question. Um, one that I've gotten multiple times and guys, please ask me questions because I've been running these groups for two years and I have a lot of people rolling over. So sometimes I feel like I've said everything like multiple times and I forget that there are new people that like need some information that I shared like six months ago. So just please, please, anytime anything comes up, post it in the group actually would be great because then I can address it and everybody can get the benefit of it. But, um, anyway, so, um, my answer basically was my house, my rules. <laughs> so I wanted to approach this with you guys and kind of share, uh, how I handle different social situations. And, um, please know that a couple things up front, a couple caveats, disclaimers. Um, one, I'm not telling you how to live your life. This is just how I live my life. Two, I'm not telling you how to parent your children, but I will tell you how um, I handle Keegan. And um, three, I'm not telling you how to deal with your family, um, but I might give you some suggestions and you can take it or leave it. So that's kind of with any of my advice, um, just know it's coming from my personal perspective, which a lot of times is like black and white, hardcore, just do it type of thing. And that doesn't work for everybody and I get it. Um, so anyways, that being said, this is what I do. So um, there are reasons that I choose to live the way I live. Um, I have had a plethora of health conditions that have improved from eating the way I eat. So I used to have these insane stomach pains, like double me over at work, cannot work, um, not relating to my period. I used to have excruciating periods, um, like a lot. Um, I used to have rosacea. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I used to have uh, headaches all the time where I would take uh, Excedrin like on the daily um, weight gain obviously and yo-yoing and um, I'm trying to think of a couple more because I know I every time I go through my list I always forget like half the things I used to struggle with because it feels like so long ago but um, every couple days I'll be like oh my gosh I used to have this and it was like all the time and that's improved from my diet so there's a huge uh, physical, emotional, and a mental reason why I choose to do what I do. And I just frankly feel better than, you know, I did 10 years ago when I was young and had a perfect metabolism. Um, I mean, I show pictures of when I was 21 years old. I'm now 31 years old and I was like 20 pounds heavier and like super duper unhealthy. So, um, there's a reason that I choose and, and, and I always want to come back to that with you guys. There has to be a reason that you make these choices. It cannot be that you want to fit into a size two pants. It cannot be vanity. It cannot be that, um, you know, uh, a short term reason. It has to be a long term reason because if it's not a long term, why, if you don't have a long term reason, then the second it gets hard, you quit. Or the second it gets hard, you go to what you are used to. So you have to, in order to develop healthy habits as your go-to, then it has to be, there has to be a, a, a drive. You have to have a reason. So I've shared this many, many times, but my reason is brain health and old age. I do not, at 80 and 90 years old, want to forget who you are. I do not want to slowly degrade from dementia and all these kinds of things that are completely, almost entirely um, able to be reversed or um, prevented by your healthy lifestyle. Um, so, you know, that's a huge motivator for me. So what I do, because it is, it is how I live, it is ingrained in my personality, 
It is just not a choice for me. Um, anything in the house is up for grabs. So unless it's like a food sensitivity thing, like I can't have carrots right now, but Keegan can have carrots and Patrick can have carrots. They're really, unless it's something like that or like a special treat, like for example, probably the worst thing we have in the house right now is these candy corns because Keegan likes candy corn every single year for Halloween. It's a treat for him, but I did make him choose a healthier version this year. So, um, it was not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, so that's probably the worst thing we have in the house and I'm not eating it, but it's his treat. So, um, in my house are only foods that I can eat. There are no fallbacks. Like if I'm having a bad day, I can have a pop tart. Like it's not in my house. Um, and you know, I don't feel deprived. My family doesn't feel deprived. We keep dark chocolate in the house. We keep, um, enjoy life chocolate chips. Um, I will make occasionally homemade coconut milk ice cream, which by the way, pistachio is amazing. It's seriously good. Um, I'll make those chickpea brownies. Oh my gosh. I could not stop eating them this weekend, um, but they're so good. So like, it's not a deprivation thing, okay? And and there are things that your family and your kids will like. Um, but so in my house, Keegan does not get special treatment. He eats what we eat. He goes to school with food that I send him to, unless I forget and then he orders it from school. But um, he gets the food that we eat. There's no special treatment. And the thing about kids is, yes, they're resilient, but it's very important to be feeding their brains and feeding their bodies to me it's like if it's not good for me it's not good for, it's not good for Keegan like why would I feel okay giving that to him you know what I'm saying so um you know and just as a personal example yes they're resilient but it goes both ways so um Keegan went to visit his biological mom this summer for four weeks you guys four weeks and he came back and he had gained a significant amount of weight to the point where when I saw him at the airport, his face was rounder. He had, uh, his belly was developing rolls. I mean, it was significant. And this was four weeks. And it took about three months of us getting him back into physical activity and eating healthy foods to get him back to his normal um, and, you know, self. And just to clarify, we do not portion control. We do not calorie count. We do not limit the amount of food that he gets to eat. He has access to it all. It's just treats his body better. It's just the type of food that he eats. So, um, I mean, that is a significant difference in the body of a 13 year old boy. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. If that happens to a 13 year old who has an insane metabolism, you know, how do you think it affects us as adults? So, um, Anyways, I don't treat Keegan differently. I don't, you know, the only I'm a little more lax on him than I am on myself. Um, and the one thing that we will do is let him cheat when he goes to birthday parties. He'll have pizza or cake or whatever. Um, so we'll allow him to have that social experience and that sort of thing. But in our house and when we go out to eat, we stick to our, our, um, our guidelines. Okay, so what about um, when we have people over? My house, my rules. Um, and you know what? Here's the thing. Nobody complains because it's really good food. It's legit good food. I don't eat cardboard, you guys. Like, this, this lifestyle is not hard um, in regards to flavor. Um, it's really, really good. And 90% of the time, people are like, oh my gosh, this meal is really good, Kylie. And I'm like, thanks. Um, you know, so two, two things. One, don't talk about it. Just make good food. You don't have to make it a big deal to people that it's gluten-free or that it's paleo or that it's, you know, this or that. Um, so just a couple examples of things that you can just make that people will like. Chili is a big one. Like, everybody loves chili, right? It's just chili. It's like beans, tomatoes, um, onion, green pepper, spices, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. And most people love it. Right? So, like, you're having a game day party, you're having some people over to your house, just make some chili. If um, you really want, like, a side with it, then make, um, you can get some um, Simple Mills crackers that are sprouted seeds, and they're grain-free. Really good. Um, you can get some even bread or some gluten-free bread if you really, really want to. You can make some paleo bread, which is always my favorite thing to do, because then that's an educational piece. So, one is, like, don't talk about it, right? But two is, if you make really good feet food and people compliment you on it, it becomes an educational piece. Oh, did you know this bread is nut free and grain free? And I made it with coconut flour and it's really easy. I literally whipped it up and stuck it in the oven. I didn't take much work and it's like my favorite bread. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Um, so 
either don't talk about it and make it a big deal, or if somebody brings it up, use it to talk to people. Um, so finding things that are uh, common that people are going to like. So another example, chili is one of my favorites because it's like everybody likes it. But another one is like pot roast. And these are things that can be simple, guys. This doesn't have to mean, you know, that you turn into Martha Stewart, right? So pot roast. You stick a ton of meat in there. It, it uh, feeds a ton of people. You could probably have like eight people in your house. Um, depending on, you know, if you get two, two pounds or four pounds, it'll make a lot. So it's like meat and vegetables, right? So pair that with some fruit or a side salad, and you've got a normal dinner that people aren't even going to think, oh, she's healthy, right? It's just good food. Um, they might think you're a little Martha stewart -y and that you like to cook, which is always kind of fun, and you're like, yeah, it took a long time. Not, I threw it in the crock pot, right? Okay, so those are the best kind of meals. Um, the other side of that is make things that, um, people enjoy, but, um, make things that like find a couple specifically, cause this is always the impressor. Find a couple things that, uh, you really, really like in, in terms of desserts. So, um, I have two go-to desserts. It's chocolate chip cookies from Against All Grain. They're called Real Deal Chocolate Chip Cookies. I've shared the recipe many times and brownies. The reason I like these is because both of them no one will ever know the difference. And if they compliment you, it's an educational piece. So um, the Real Deal Chocolate Chip Cookies taste like Toll House, except they don't have any grain in them, and they don't have any refined sugars. I think they might have honey or coconut sugar in them. Um, so, no, they're not, like, the healthiest thing in the world. You shouldn't eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's still a treat. But it's different than the garbage that you go buy in a package at Kroger, right? Okay, so it's different. It's It's like this it's not maybe the best but it's definitely not the worst and it's not bad for you and the way I always look at it is I can have something that's nutritionally void completely nutritionally void and actually harms me or I can have something that's like you know not not a salad but it also still has micronutrients like honey and almond flour and things like that still have vitamins and minerals that my body needs so it's not bad for me and it actually has some good stuff for me and it tastes like a chocolate chip cookie so that's how I view that. The other one that I love is brownies, and my current favorite, I have like five different recipes, but my current favorite is the chickpea brownies that I share all the time. And if you keep them in the fridge, they get extra fudgy, and it's just amazing. Nobody can tell the difference, guys. You know, everybody loves those brownies. They're just really, really good. Um, so don't make it a big deal. If it comes up, find recipes that are super flavorful that people um, will be like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And then you can be like, oh yeah, by the way. Um, so that's how I handle having people over to my house. How do I handle going to people's houses? Well, that depends on the person. Um, it's kind of obvious that I'm a health coach. So nine times out of 10, people know that I'm, I eat a certain way, right? I'm very obviously public about it. If there's a situation where I'm not sure what's going to be made or the person doesn't know me that well or I just don't know what's going to be there, you can feel free to ask the host, hey, do you mind if I ask what's for dinner? Usually there's going to be meat of some sort, a vegetable, a fruit. You're good to go, right? So maybe you want to offer to bring dessert or you just don't eat dessert when they serve it. Um, so be in communication with the, with the host and feel free to offer to bring a dish. Nobody's like offended when you're like, hey, do you mind if I bring something? And Or if you just flat out say, hey, um, that sounds really, really awesome. I am, you know, trying this for a little while. Um, would you mind if I made the dessert? You know, nobody, you know, people are usually pretty receptive. Um, and if they're not, maybe you should find some new friends. <laughs> um, so what about a general group setting? Like let's go to a church potluck or let's go to a party of some sort or baby shower or whatever it is. Or like a work thing. So uh, most of the time there's something you can eat. Like most of the time. So usually there's a meat, a vegetable, a fruit. Right? Like, And if there's a sandwich, just take the bread off. Or, you know, a wrap, pull out the ingredients. Or, you know, whatever it is. Like you can almost always find a way to make it work almost always I have done this for five years and there's maybe been one situation where there was literally nothing I could eat so it kind of bugs me when people are like well I was thrown into this situation and the cupcake jumped into my mouth no it didn't okay um so um you have to but that goes back to the why like you have to have a reason or else you go to what's easy right so um okay all right so when you're in a public situation you can always make it work if there's any sort of doubt, 
put snacks in your bag. Always. Like, you should always be carrying a bottle of water, and you should always have, like, an apple or some grapes or a layer of bar or whatever your go-to favorite thing is, or Shakeology. Um, but carry it with you so that if you're in a pinch, like, I just sometimes this is how my body works. Sometimes I just boom, get hungry. Like, and I don't want to be out in a situation where I'm like starving or I start getting hangry. So I almost always have something in the bottom of my purse. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then finally, um, traveling. So my husband is just the best example of this. He just, um, is doing this right now he's traveling and he will just get off the plane and go straight to Whole Foods and then he'll make some chili or you know whatever it is um, and basically whether you're visiting family or whether we go on a vacation depending on like we we kind of tend to stay at like crunchy places that that serve like the kind of food that we eat but if we don't or if we need to like um, if, you know if we don't want to spend that much money or whatever um, then we usually have a room that has a fridge and we'll go to the store and we'll stock it up and that way we can have the food that we like and that we're used to and that's good for us um, so you can go to wherever and get some green juices or um, some fruits some vegetables some soups um, depending on if you have a kitchen you can make your own stuff um, so just keep in mind there's always an option but it always goes back to is this important to you because if it's important we find a way like as women we make work what is valuable and important to us so it does not matter what your budget is it does not matter what your family situation is it does not matter what your life situation is I know people that are like so busy my head spins and they are on top of their life you know what I'm saying? Like they figure it out and they meal plan on the weekends and they prep everything they need on Sunday so that throughout the week they don't have to think about it. So there's always a way. The same way is not right for everybody. The same diet isn't right for everybody. But if it's important to you, there is a way to accomplish it. So that always goes back to why are you doing it? You have to have a long-term reason why you're doing it because then that pr pushes you to find the, the way to make it work. If you don't have that why, then as soon as you get busy, as soon as you get tired, as soon as it gets hard, you go back to what you're used to and that's where we have the yo-yo cycling that we really, really want to break. We want to get out of that. We want to make it a lifestyle. We want to stop dieting. We want to know what works for our bodies. And by the way, that may change over the course of time. Be willing to listen to your body. Um, so that's all I got for you today, guys. If you have any questions, um, do share them in the group because I'm always happy to talk about it. So I hope you guys have a happy Monday. Bye.